I have applied to over 500 research job postings over the past couple of months. Literally, I've applied for like 300 roles at this point or more. I stopped counting after a while. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Hi there. Welcome back to the channel. I feel like there is no country on this earth that makes me as confused as Canada does. And I will tell you why. The last time I made a video about Canada, we you know talked about the cost of living being high in canada now and everything being expensive and with so many people complaining about how they can't afford things and how they wish they were living somewhere else like in uh, the united states or somewhere else on the planet where things are easier and many of them were saying that they were making their plans in a way that in the near future they will move out of canada and go live somewhere else and many comments that i saw on these clips and also on my video were from people saying that actually the problem Canada has is migrant problem. They were saying that Canada has taken in so many migrants and you know because cheap labor and all and they've taken over all the jobs that were available and now people can't find jobs and I was like huh that that kind of makes sense right it just it makes sense but what doesn't make sense is this later on i saw a video from a canadian politician saying hey actually in the coming years we will be taking in more migrants why because we have so many jobs and we don't have anyone to do them and this is the video that i'm talking about let's watch it together it's simple to me canada needs more people Canadians understand the need to continue to grow our population if we're going to meet the needs of the labor force. You know, immigration in Canada is not just something that we do, it's, it's who we are, it's, it's who we've always been. This year's immigration levels plan will help address some of these challenges that I've outlined by setting a new target from 431,000 this year to 465,000 next year, 485,000 in 2024, and 500,000 in the year 2025. So when I saw this video, I was like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I'm very confused now. Like people are saying that there are so many migrants in Canada that, you know, there are no jobs available anymore and Canada should stop, you know, taking in migrants. On the other side, the politician is saying, hey, we need more people to come in to do our jobs because we don't have anyone to do them. And I'm like, shit is confusing as hell. Because if there are so many jobs available and they don't have anyone to do them, then why the heck do I always see people complaining that they can't find jobs. Just like the people we are going to watch now, they are complaining about how the job market is crazy, how they can't find any jobs at all, even though they have degrees and all. You know what? Let's watch them first, and I will be back in the end to tell you what I think. Listen, I've never been good at math, so you guys are gonna help me with this calculation because it's not making sense to me. How are we in an employee shortage crisis, but I've applied, to over a bajillion jobs over the summer that I'm extremely overqualified for. It's like an entry level job and I'm like, yes, I have a law degree. I have a teacher certificate. I have experience as a teacher, as a content creator, as a legal assistant. I uh, went on NASA one time. Did I just say I went on NASA? Did I go on NASA? Jesus Christ, take my degree away from me. Now I understand why they didn't call me back. Now everything's, I don't need help with the calculation anymore, bye. I don't know if it's me or the job market in Canada is just not doing well right now. I have applied to over 500 research job postings over the past couple of months and I haven't heard back from even one single one of them. And I have a research master's degree in Canada, extensive um, experience doing research, participant recruitment, um, data analysis, data collection, writing, um, both in qualitative and quantitative research methods. And I'm pretty sure I'm qualified for at least half of the jobs that I've applied to. And yet I have no luck. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but let me know if you do. Trying to find a job in, in this like market right now is fucking insane. And it's so it's so hard trying to explain it to someone who's not looking for a job because they will constantly gaslight you into thinking it is your fault that you cannot find the job. I have three jobs right now. Three. So I can stay afloat. So I don't have to try to find a shelter to keep myself in and possibly one that I fucking work at. Like, it's it's really ridiculous. I was applying to, like, all, like almost 30 jobs a day. And I will never forget... 
I was talking with my dad one day before I got these other two jobs because it took me a while because it, like it's like you you have the qualifications and they want you to have 10 years more of those qualifications even though you literally would have been a small child that couldn't have even fucking wiped their own ass. Um, I one day decided to show my dad because I was having a, I was getting really irritated. I was almost crying. I was like, I can't do this. I'm applying for jobs and I'm not getting anything. And he kind of kept insinuating that like I needed to try harder. And I got upset. I pulled out my phone and I showed him how many jobs I applied to that day. I went through indeed and I just scrolled. I said, this is today. I'm like, these are the jobs I applied to today, not through the week, not through the past month for the day. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I work with people who are m so fucking qualified to have supervisor positions, management positions, and they're applying for that shit and they're not fucking getting it. I don't understand it. There is a company that I worked for as a third party and they wanted me to work for them, for their company. I applied two times. I never got it. Every time I'd go on site, I'd have supervisors, I'd have managers. I, I swear to God, once I had the fucking director asking me, when are you applying? And I looked at them and I'm like, I'm not applying again for a third time to not get hired. It's ridiculous. You can have all the qualifications. You can have more than expected qualifications. And people just aren't fucking hiring you. You want to know what's so frustrating? Is the fact that I've been applying for jobs since last summer and I have literally gone to every store. I've applied everywhere. I've applied online because I know everything's now online. I give my some of my resume online. I go in person, I give my resume, and then I don't hear anything back. And it's just really frustrating because I've been searching for a job for almost a year now and like I really need to start working because I'm also on my gap here right now. And I've literally, con like, I've been consistent. Like, I've been going, I've been going to places, I've been going everywhere, literally. Like, I've been going to so many stores so like every store i've been to um but like i don't hear anything but uh i'm not i've not heard back from them at all and it's just really frustrating and yeah it's so oh, somebody's pulling over right now i don't know why but uh okay anyway. <laughs> um but anyways uh i've been I've honestly been trying so hard to find a job. Honestly, like, I've been, I literally went to so many job fairs. I waited in line for the whole day. I've dropped my resume. I literally went to so many job fairs, waited so long. And it's just like, I've been going everywhere. I've been very consistent. And yet, like, I don't hear back from any of them. It's just like, why? Like, why is it so hard? Like, why can't you give a call? Like, I'm just really frustrated because I've been trying for so long. And it's just like, I've I don't know why nobody's hiring anyone like why like what what is going on why as a person that's born and raised in tr in Canada I should not have I should not be struggling to find a job I should not and it's just it's really frustrating it's really annoying I really hope that somebody has a kind heart and responds back to this video hopefully they have something for me um but I'm you know, I even though I'm a bit, you know, I, I am a bit disappointed to be honest. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna lose hope, and I'm just hoping that someone that's good-hearted, someone that there's someone that will give me a chance, and I really hope that there is someone because I believe that something will happen. Like I have a feeling that someone will probably that I will find something eventually. But it's just it's been really hard and. Uh, it really should not be like this at all. I'm so tired. I'm so tired! Part of this account was showing what it's like post-graduation in college. And let me tell you, so far, not great. I graduated in May. And I, I can't even... I'm pretty sure I've probably applied to like 600 jobs. At least. At bare minimum. Like, that's not even me over-exaggerating. That's like the bare minimum. And if one more freaking indeed applications like can you take these tests it's gonna be one two three and then all 10 minute songs about 30 minutes and then on top of that we're gonna ask you to do a video interview brother how hard is it to pick up the phone and be like we're interested in giving you an interview do you want my firstborn child first before you decide if i'm good for your job i'm like out here giving dna samples just to see if i can meet the qualifications to get the position and they act all like your daddy who traumatize you and didn't give you a time of day then they ghost you 
I get more ghosted by jobs than people. So is there anybody who is in my position? I just want to know. Um, so I was laid off almost seven months ago and literally I've applied for like 300 roles at this point or more. I stopped counting after a while. I do have a tracker for it, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so it's been almost seven months and I literally only have got like three callbacks and those have just been phone screens and, you know, the bare minimum. And I have literally got zero interviews. Is there anybody else in my position? Like, how are you feeling? Like, how is this normal? Like, I know there are so many new postings and all of that. And um, I know, like, you know, so many layoffs are happening and all of that. But this sucks. Like, am I alone in this? I know I'm not. Let me know. I double majored in IT and business for five years graduated cum laude, interned at the NRC and CRA and RBC for four to eight months in their information systems department and did that degree in English and French, networked tons during my time in uni, grew my social media platforms to almost 90K followers, and I still couldn't find a job after a year of graduating so i picked up whatever job i could get just understand this is not your fault the market at right now is absolutely outrageous people with five to ten years of experience the smartest people i know the most intelligent people i know are not being hired and they're having to pick up whatever jobs they can so it's not your fault just keep going and you will get there. Immigrant parents do teach us to be hardworking and I'm first generation here in Toronto. So my parents put everything behind me. But yeah, hone in on your skills, keep working hard and try to move to different positions and don't give up, you know, cause it's not your fault. It's the market, it's the city you're in. And right now the world is a mess. In the past, when I would talk to people that I know who was out of work, who told me they were out of work for like two, three, four, five months, even though I try hard to be not judgmental, there would always be a part of me that was thinking, you got to be sabotaging yourself. There, you, there's something that you're doing to purposely not be hireable. Like, I, I w again, I, I wouldn't want to judge, but like it was so hard to believe that someone who was actively looking for a job and who was qualified for a lot of jobs could not find a job but i find myself now in the position where it is near to impossible to get a job in the city now obviously when you're in the market for a new job you want to try to find a job that is similar to the previous job that you had so that you can utilize your skill set and your you know education and your experiences to be successful at your new job so you don't have to go through all of this vigorous training and all of this stuff but the fact of the matter is that a lot of the times when you try to find a job that was similar to the previous job that you had, there is going to be so many people that are equally, if not more qualified than you, more education, more work experience, better personality, can hold their fucking breath underwater longer than you, can run longer distance than you, that will make them a better candidate and will allow or make the hiring manager choose them over you. So after being rejected time and time again, you then look at the other side of the train track and say, you know what, let me go after a job where I might be overqualified. Maybe I might have to take a pay cut, but at the end of the day, the main goal is to get some sort of employment. But the problem you face with applying for a job that you're overqualified is that the hiring manager or the person that's, you know, responsible for hiring, whatever, um, they look at your resume, they see your credentials, they see your work experience, they see your skill set, they see your education, and they and immediately think that because you're so overqualified, you're not serious about the job. The second that you find something better, you're out the door. So why waste time training you? Why waste time, you know, spending, why waste time and energy in you when you are not serious about staying long term? So on one end of the spectrum, you go after jobs that you are qualified for and then obviously someone that's way more qualified gets it and then when you go after jobs that you're 
overqualified for, then they're scared to choose you because they fear that you're just going to leave them. So then you're stuck in the middle, no job, wil wilting away like a fucking houseplant in the middle of winter. I swear, the longer you go with being unemployed, the more desperate you get and your expectations dwindle. When I first was looking for a job, I was very specific in what I, specific in what I was looking for. You know, I looked at the pay. I looked at the, you know, obviously the qualifications. I looked at what I actually be doing. And at this point, after facing so much rejection, I will take a job fucking milking cows. I will take a job stomping fucking grapes to make wine at this point. Like, I, I say all of this to say this, like, just looking for a job is depressing, you know, and it's just, it's like a lose-lose situation. You put in the effort, you put in the time, you put in the dedication for nothing. Like, so I, I feel for everyone out there that is going through that, ha who have been out of work for months on end, I feel for you, okay? And I pray that you find your dream job and I don't know what to say. I'm just going to go fucking have a glass of wine with some gummy bears. So I recently moved to Calgary and if I'm being completely honest, I feel like I got catfished. Everyone's always like, there's so much economic opportunity in Alberta. It's so easy to get a job. You should move there. No. So many people have moved to Alberta in the last little while. It's made the labor market super competitive. It took me four months to get a job as a waitress. And Can we talk for a second about how competitive the job market is right now? Like I know it depends on field and all that stuff, but just in general, I just had a job interview um, and I was talking to the recruiter and he said they got 450 applications 450 now this is not like some amazing job it is pays less than $20 an hour and it's part-time so no benefits no none of that which is crazy to me so out of the 450 applications he got he did 30 interviews so I guess I should be happy I was in the top what is that seven and a half percent so yay, go me. And then out of those 30 interviews, they're hiring two people. So two out of 450. So that is less than half a percent chance. It's, it's crazy out there, guys. So in my opinion, really actually Canada has a migrant problem. I don't understand why they want to take in more people because if these people can find jobs, I feel like it's because face, there are no jobs out there. There are less jobs available than people who are looking for jobs i think <laughs> the solution is not taking more migrants of course i mean you can't close the country and be like yo we don't need migrants anymore and all but i feel like the solution to you know attending these jobs which are unattended now is not to bring in migrants but it's to help these people be you know qualified for these jobs they should develop some sort of strategy that will help the citizens first and then if the citizens are helped, that way they can bring in more migrants. I don't understand why, but for some reasons, America prioritizes migrants. To me, it's kind of weird. To me, it's like, is there someone compelling you to do it? Is there someone who is forcing you like, hey, you need to take in migrants? So I feel like at some point, Canada is going to become like France, you know, like there's countries which are like, you know, taken over by migrants. And to be honest, I don't even care. But I have people who, you know, follow my videos, like people like you who probably care because you are from there and you know that things are going to be affected negatively if they keep bringing in more people. I lived in Turkey before the war of Syria. Back then, Turkey was this country where like you could easily find a job and all. Then migrants from Syria came in, not migrants, even refugees from Syria came in, they became integrated and all, and they started doing everything for cheap. So what happened is the job market also kind of adapted to that and they started offering low wages and low salaries because they knew if you don't take the job, there will always be that Syrian refugee who is going to take it even for almost free. So I feel like Canada is heading that way, to be honest. I hope it doesn't. And if you are from Canada, I hope that you don't get affected, but that's my opinion. I would like to know what you think about this topic. I would like to know what is your opinion and if you have realized something that maybe I missed and all. So let's meet in the comment section and talk about it. As always, thank you very much for watching this video up to here. I really appreciate all the support that you guys do to the channel. And as always, I will see you in my next video. So peace.